Welcome to We Plus You, straight talk about mind, body, business, and spirit. And I am very delighted today, because today I have with me the wonderful Carol Wayne, and she's a very astute businesswoman. And we're going to be talking about her after effects of the telesummit that she did. And I can't wait to find out her aha moments and what she would now be doing differently than she did before. And I don't like the should have, could have, would have, so we're not going to dwell on that. We're going to be actually talking about ways to help people now know how to actually make things better, actually, which is a good thing, because it's always great to learn from our adventures, wouldn't you say, Carol? Absolutely. And thanks for having me back again, Carly. Always, it's always a delight to have you, Carol, I must say. I, I love our conversations and how far down the rabbit hole we can go. So actually, I'd love for you to actually share the title of this, to tell us some of that you did, and share a little bit about your inspiration behind why you actually had the Telesummit. All right, so the Telesummit was the Women's Reinvention Summit, and we had that in September. And the inspiration is that I am known to many as the Queen of Reinvention, and I wanted to get out there in a big way to take a big step to help people by bringing in a bunch of experts to talk about reinvention. And I figured that even though I have my show, The Reinvention Show, which you've been on a, a couple of times, uh, that is a really good platform. But the summit just brings everything together. And that's why I chose to do it. Now, as we all know, a lot of people think it's great to have a telesummit. I want to have a telesummit. I want to have a radio show. I want to do this. I want to do that. A lot of people do not know what it takes to do a telesummit. So I would love for you to share with the audience, and I know for you this was your first telesummit, was it not? Yes, it was. Yeah. And so were you prepared, or did you have any idea of what it was going to take to do the telesummit? Do you know, Carly, I thought I did <laughs> until I got into it. Um, I have a background in event planning, and so I thought, no problem, I, I can do this. I also interviewed um, Ben Croft, who does Telesummits, and Deborah Lansky, and I took a Telesummit course, and I spoke to another couple of people, and I can't remember their names, otherwise I'd mention them by name, but I really did some re research to find out how to do this properly. And every single one of them said to me, it is a lot of work. And I'm like, yeah, no, it can't be that much work. Ah, uh, they're right. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So I'd actually love for you to actually break down some of those steps. What is actually some of the processes that you took to actually do the telesummit? So we've got the first part is what is your theme going to be? What's your telesummit for? Who is your audience? Which is what we do in marketing all the time. Who's your target audience and what is your promise? And what are the intended outcomes for the, the telesummit? So that is definitely the first step. And then you find your speakers who are going to speak on those various topics to deliver the promise that, you, that your marketing message is all about. So then I reached out to my network, and I had so many people, I actually had to turn people down, which was kind of awkward for me to do, but you know, you have to do what you have to do. And then Probably the hardest part is getting the speakers to actually do <laughs> what you've asked them to do, to sign the agreement, to send the bios and their stories and their, the other elements that you've requested as part of the summit, and, um, and then to market. And I required within my agreement that my speakers were to reach out and do a, a mail blast and uh, social media and that was one of the things that it was a bit dis disappointing for me because some people did it but a lot of them didn't and that really impacted the summit. So that was one of the things that I had said to you when we got when we were on earlier before I hit the broadcast button social media. I don't think a lot of people realize how important social media is Social media is one of these things that really does impact the outcome. And, and, and as you actually saw that through your own views, you actually got to see how many people were getting more views than other people. And yeah. did you not see the impact of that? Absolutely. You could tell who was you could tell who was using social media because you could see the spikes in in the number of 
people who are watching this summit while we were doing it live, and also how many views we have of the video afterwards and how many views of the video, because I had two different videos. I had the live video from the Hangout on Air, and then I had the edited version of the video. Um, and we can talk about that. Remind me to talk about that in a bit, why that may or may not be a very good strategy. But um, So you really, really have to use your social media channels. It's really cool, though. Um, I use a couple of different tools to tell me when someone's mention, mentioning me on social media. And it's really cool to see, oh, at Carly Elizabeth Thorne has posted, has tweeted something about the summit. So it's good to see. And you really can check up on your speakers and say, you know what, I know for a fact you did not do what you said you were going to do. So. And that's the thing also what I always encourage people to understand is you have to vet your speakers. And when the, ver the term vetting, by the way, means doing a little bit of due diligence. Know your speakers. Not everyone is someone is on stage as they are off stage. Check their Twitter feed. Twet, uh, check their Facebook pages. Do they acknowledge people that actually, for example, I interview people all the time. I actually check to see that if I'm going to do an interview like with Carol, for example, does she actually do, after I interview her, does she share it? Mm -hmm. You know, I actually go check their feeds. When people actually interview them beforehand, I go check out when they've been interviewed by other people. Do they share the interviews? Mm -hmm. Do they go share it on their Facebook? Now, here's the interesting part about, uh, as speakers, by the way, the, some of them will not share on the personal walls. They may share on their pages. They won't share on the personal walls, which to me is someone I might not interview. Because here's the thing, Carol is the face of her business. So she's not willing to share on her personal wall. That's our, her social media isn't going to be as effective. Because people are drawn to Carol, her face, her, her nuances, her hands. I mean, literally, how she's talking is she animated, not just her business page. So like when Carol, when I was on her summits, I was sharing it not just on my business page, I was also sharing it on my personal page. So you have to go look and see how they share, because it really is, they're drawn to you as a person, not just as a speaker, as an author. Right, now, don't get me wrong, my, my speakers were fantastic, they've had great content. I was thrilled, actually, at the quality of the interviews that, that I had. It was, that, that was one of the things you, you asked me, what would I do different, and I would really insist, really insist that they live up to their end of the bargain for you using social media too. No, to well, now let me pre-frame. I want to say that I wasn't specifically talking about Carol speakers. What I was just saying is for anybody out there who's doing a tele-summit or anyone out there who's doing any sort of event, you have to make sure you know your speakers that you're dealing with. So I wasn't putting anything out there about Carol speakers. I'm talking about for anyone in general. So I just want to make sure I say that. Yeah, I didn't think you were talking about my speakers. <laughs> yeah, um, and what else did I learn? Um, I did my summit live, and I don't believe I would do that again. Um, part of that was it put an enormous pressure on my team because we were offering transcripts and, and edited videos and so on. And it was so much pressure on them to get all of these transcripts done and even to get the, the, the live stream into the membership site that we use. It was, it was very labor intensive for them. And for me, I was managing them at the same time as I was getting myself ready. And it was, it was unnecessary pressure, let's just put it that way. I, I wouldn't do that again. So now here are some of the benefits. And now from my end, because I do this all the time, me and Carol right now, we're live on Google Hangouts. However, what I produce on the end is not a live Hangout. I'm, I and Carol are talking right now. However, I put a front end in. I put a back end in. This now goes to, after Carol and I are talking, I go to my Google Hangout. I delete it. I then go, it goes into my YouTube. I make it private. Then it goes to my editor. That way... I do all my shows, they're pre-recorded, and then they get aired. As she said, it's a lot of pressure when you do things live, and there's some things that Carol may say, hey, I want to I I promote this, or I may want to add this in, I might, I might, or she may have some photos of a book, or, for example, I'm going to ask Carol about some of the things she's doing in her life right now. 
that she may now then send me some pictures of her new books that are coming out that I may then want to add into the video. So there are a lot of advantages to not doing live. It really gives you a lot of time. And I'm not talking about time as in making things come out like in a month from now. All my videos that I do in interviews, they're out within four days. Mm -hmm. um, but it does give you the pre less pressure and it gives us more time to brainstorm and go, hey, let's add this in or, or let's tweak this or let's tweak that. Or, for example, I, did, I do four shows. So I actually did a different intro than an intro to a different show. <laughs> so I'm going to actually now have my editor started at a different timestamp. So there are advantages to not doing live. And, um, and Carol, going back to you, you, I know you have a lot of exciting things going on in your life right now. I'd love for you to share them. Oh my goodness. There is like, <laughs> how many hours do we have? No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I started with my platform, which is reinvention, in February of this year. So nine months ago. And I'm feeling, ooh, here's an analogy. I'm feeling that I'm finally ready to birth it. <laughs> um, what I've done is I'm writing a couple of books about reinvention, one with a co one with one co-author as part of his series. And then I'm writing another reinvention book with my presenters from the summit, which is really cool. And then I started to write a parable. And I woke up one morning saying, I have to write a parable. And I had no idea what it was. <laughs> you know when you have a dream and you go, I gotta listen to this dream? So I googled what is a parable <laughs> and I went, okay, yeah, I think I can I think I can do this. I've never written fiction before in my life. And then I contacted my daughter and and she's a very good writer. Um, she's in first year of university. And I said to her, Lauren, um, what are the elements of a parable? <laughs> so she told me. And uh, she and I are going to be co-authors of this book. She doesn't know this yet, but she will be. Um, well, she will now that you've aired it on the show and she sees the show. Um, Lauren, you're now co-authoring with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your birthday present. So there, I've ruined that too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I'm working on those three books. Um, my reinvention process is called the super reinvention process, and that stands for the five. The, the super stands for the five steps in a reinvention, which is stop doing what doesn't work for you, understand yourself, why you need to reinvent, and what you want in your life. The P is all about your plan, plan your reinvention. The E is execute, and the R is readjust because. You know, we always readjust because we never get things just right <laughs> the first time. So, and of course, the world changes, so we always readjust. And would you like to hear about my force business? I would love to hear about your force because you and I are forces to be reckoned with. <laughs> we certainly are. <laughs> um, force is uh, my flagship product, which is for business reinvention. And force stands for what is the foundation. And part of that we look at in the um, stop and understand what you want. That fits into uh, the foundation part. Then we look at how you operate. What are your operations and your policies and your procedures and what is impacting the profitability from an operations perspective. Then we look at your reach, which is, I love reach. is all about marketing and, and how you can get out there. Then we look at your customer experience and this is a big one for me like I am so into customer experience because every decision you make in your business impacts your customers experience so even though it's step four it's not really we start looking at your customer experience first and then go back um, but we couldn't really start with the C because I couldn't figure out an acronym, an acronym for the five steps that started with the C. And then we look at your employee experience. And if you don't have employees, we look at your team, your outsourcers, the people that you work with. And it's a very holistic view of your business to make sure that you are as successful as you possibly can be. And for some business, that requires a reinvention. Others, it's just a little tweak here and there, but it's all it's all in there. So that's everything I'm doing in a nutshell. 
So what would you say out of your entire experience from where you were then as to where you are now, what would be the biggest, because you've been involved in a bunch of stretch programs, what did you say that with all the stretch programs and the teleseminar, what has been your biggest growth, your biggest aha from all that, from where you were then till now? You know, there are the stretches, like you just said, and perhaps the biggest one for me was the first step. Was the first step when I decided that I was going to be part of a video challenge, a video challenge that started on January 1st of this year, a challenge that scared the crap out of me. I was so worried about even being photographed, let alone being on video. And so on January 1st, I did the worst video I have ever done in my life, but <laughs> it was like really close and my makeup was horrible and I'd been up far too late on New Year's Eve and the lighting was off and everything was just horrible. But if I had not taken that first step, and done it even though I was so scared, I would not be sitting with you on this hangout today. I would not have had the confidence to start my reinvention show. I would not have had the confidence to reach out to people who are much more successful than I am to ask them to be as par part of my summit. I mean, I've, I've reached out to some pretty big people, <laughs> but it all comes from confidence. So, yeah, taking that first step. And what would you give people as an advice who do want to do a tell summit? What would you tell them would be the first step that someone that says they you know that they want to do a tell summit, that they're afraid to do the tell summit? What would you tell them to do as a first step? Why? Why are you doing it? Like what is your goal? Why seriously are you doing this? Are you doing it to make money? Uh, because if you are, then you're gonna to want to take a slightly different and more aggressive stance than I took. Um, what is your ultimate goal? You know, th these are questions that we ask all the time. Why are you doing it? And what's your ultimate goal? And what does success look like to you? And then when you know what that looks like, then you start going backwards to getting to the point, well, who are you going to talk to? What are you going to talk to them about? What is the goal going to be? And as I said before, and then you reach out and you find your speakers and you herd them like cats <laughs> to get them <laughs> onto your summit and then uh, you promote the heck out of it. You're, and that, to me, is something that I would do a lot different next time. I would do a lot more marketing than I did. I can't emphasize the marketing piece. Nothing, and I don't care what it is, it, your business, I mean there's lots of joint, whether it be joint venturing with people, cross marketing, and you have to implement social media. Social media is a key component to marketing. Some people disagree with that. Um, you know, they don't they don't think social media is marketing. Obviously, there's a different components of marketing. However, marketing is definitely key to anything in life, whether it be your business, telesummit, any sort any sort of event is is absolutely essential. Okay. And and like she said, it's got it. And this is something you do before, not just during your event, and also after the event. If you want people to continue to watch the videos and continue to get numbers and I mean whether whether it's a free telesummit or because sometimes people do telesummits just for experience also just to get their voice out to be heard to be seen you still need to promote it before during and after you can't just all you know before during and then go oh it's over with I don't need to promote it anymore no <laughs> that, that's like, big no no this week, for example, I have a joint venture partner who is reaching out to his list to uh, to sell the transcripts and the audios and, and the mega package. So to do that, we've actually set up a shop, like a, an e-commerce store, because he's doing something very exclusive. He and I have an arrangement for an exclusive um, set of packages, if you will. And so he's doing that. And you know, this is what, two months after the summit? And we will continue to do that. And after after he's finished with his promotion, those products are still available in the store on my website. Like carolwayne.com slash shop. <laughs> yeah, and it's important. And it's kind of hard as um, from a speaker's point of view. I'm constantly from I mean, I do so many I, I get I'm on so many telesummits and I speak so often and it's and from a speaker point of view. It's hard. I, I have to cycle because you can't promote every single thing I've done. I'm on so many different things. 
So like every month I'm promoting different things I've been on, you know. So it's hard to con continually. Well, obviously during the summit I promoted it a lot, and I also haven't promoted it as often now because I've, I'm on so many other ones. So I was like, I've just been on another one. I got to promote that one. I was just on another tell something. I got to promote that one. So you're, you're continually having to recycle what you've been on as a speaker, and so that all it's that that again is is difficult from the speaker side how you can continually promote what you have been on. And then of course you're in another thing and then you gotta promote that. So I think that that also, I'm speaking from a speaker's point of view, we as speakers have to be conscious of what we've been on so that we also can still collaborate from that point of view, from that side. Right. Exactly. So, so I think I think that that's a really a, a important thing for both parties to be aware of, the, the give and take. It's not like, you. yes, you've been a part of something, but you can't take for granted that someone also has invested time in you. It really has to be that collaborational joint venture mindset. Absolutely. And and that's what I say. My speakers were fantastic. I, I was thrilled with them. I still am thrilled with them. <laughs> I'm so thrilled that that's why um, I'm including them in my book, for example. And you know, we, we talked a lot about social media marketing and the way you can Let's talk about how we could weave it into things rather than just tweets. You know, we can go into our LinkedIn groups and and look for people who are asking questions along the lines of of the topic for this the summit, and then say, "Did you know that there was this summit?" And blah blah blah, and get the link. So there's lots of cool ways you can do it. Oh, it's it, absolutely. It's not just tweeting. I mean, I, I say tweeting, but it's not just tweeting. I mean, literally, there's Scoop it. There's Google. There's groups hashtags. If you see someone that's actually wanting to know about a specific topic and you you know about a specific topic that you've been in, use the hashtag, reach out to that person. I actually found something someone actually brought to my attention about something I did that was eons ago. And someone actually emailed me and goes, someone's actually asking about this. I think you should email let them know about this particular thing you did. And I did. So you know, pay attention when you're actually reading your Twitter feed or you're reading your Google feed or you're reading your LinkedIn feed take the time to read your feeds. People are asking questions and they actually use your name. It's too many people don't read their notifications. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're, you have notifications for a reason. You have the feeds for a reason. Take you know, five minutes a day out of your time at, from each feed, from each social media platform that is. LinkedIn has a feed. Read it. Take the time to read what people are saying about you. It's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've just spent uh, time actually yesterday going through my my website feed and seeing all the comments that people are leaving and how, you know responding to what people said to make sure you, you can't take for granted when people leave comments on your website you have to respond to them yeah. the same thing with all the other platforms because you're missing out on possible leads you're missing out on giving people information that does go back to your websites to your product which gives you more leads and more conversations and more connections. That's so and, important. And more social proof. I mean, exactly. Yeah, you know, I always use the analogy of, of going out to dinner. If you're going out to dinner in an unknown city and you're walking down the street and that restaurant's full and that one's empty, which one are you going to go to? To the one that's full, obviously, because obviously the food must be yummy or they're not going to be in there. If the at restaurant's empty, there's obviously many reasons why it's empty. And the one that's full, obviously there's many reasons why it's full. Right, and that's what social proof is all about. So think about it's that. It's the same one. thing with all the platform scores. A lot of people are all oh, the scores are bogus. Well, yes and no. Yes, people can gain the system and not so much because they have to do things to get the scores. You know, so you, you kind of have to use your brain a little bit, you know. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You so, have to be strategic too, because it can become a really big time suck. So, yeah. You know, if you go onto Facebook, like I did this morning, I had all these heartwarming um, links from that people have shared, so they showed up in my feed. So I'm following the bouncing ball here and there and everywhere, and that wasn't very productive. But I did have a good little cry this morning. So. Aww. <laughs> No. Well, that's again about chunking. That's time management. You have to, you know, basically take the time to do time management. And that may mean that you take a certain specific time and say, okay, for 15 minutes, I'm going to do this. I may donate 15 times to Google, 15 minutes to LinkedIn. You may take an hour of your day to do social media. For some people, 
it's one hour. For some people, maybe two hours. It depends on, now here's again, what is your business? Who are you? Are you a consultant? Are you a CEO? Are you a CTO? What is your business? Who, you know, it really depends on what your position is and what you do for a living. Some people are on the internet for three hours a day because they are a social media consultant or, or depending, you know, again, it really depends on what you do for a living and what your, ben, your abundance factor is. If your social media leads lead to more of business, you're going to be on social media more. It really depends on what you do. And I'd just like to um, add to that. I have bought so much because of who I was following on social media. And I think my biggest purchase was a $10,000 three-day um, intensive for someone that I met in a Facebook group and then reached out to and went back and forth. So uh, it's for the people who say you can't make money with social media, I say no. <laughs> That's wrong. Um, I would not have met you and invited you to my show and to my summit had it not been for social media. So it's it's so vitally important to every business. And, and when you and I are the face of our business, so if we were not on social media, and of course YouTube is part of the social media and Google Plus Hangouts, um, people wouldn't see our personalities and like you said, I'll, I'm so animated. <laughs> I knock things off my table sometimes when I'm talking, but it's, you get to see beyond the words and the copy and the, the mechanics of, of marketing and you get to see who you're dealing with. And I'm going to add to that, on stage, off stage. Someone actually asked me to tweet it out, what is authenticity? Authenticity is the face that you show to someone everywhere. On stage, off, off stage, in bed, out of bed, when you wake up, you know, it's literally the same face you show everywhere. And also, they're hearing our knowledge. It's not what's in the textbook that you're reading. It's also, what are you hearing? Are you living, in other words, are we living what we're teaching? Mm -hmm. So I, that's what I, you know, I, I have, I run a bunch of groups, and I, I also have one of the days is multimedia day. A lot of people are like, I don't like multimedia day. Well, here's the problem with that. Multimedia is everything because multimedia actually does show. It's like when you sh when you when you shake someone's hand, whether you know it or not, you instantly know whether you like that person or not. You don't know why. It's a feeling. When people see the face and the nuances, we don't know why, but people connect with us in a different way. Some people are visual. Some people are auditory. You know, some people when they read, they learn. A lot of people are visual in nature. Now with multimedia, they're getting both. They're getting auditory, they're listening to or they're hearing our words, they're also getting the visual. So multimedia is a huge component to business because they're really getting multi-nuances of who we are and also what we know. Mm -hmm. In other words, we're, you, you never know who's listening and we never know who we're impacting and we never know what we're saying that very minute someone needed to hear that. So yeah. I'm a huge component to multimedia. Because just posting on our Facebook walls isn't enough. These little videos, whether it be a five minute video or a 10 minute video, and you and I could talk for hours. I usually <laughs> attempt to keep them under an hour. You and I can go down the rabbit hole for two hours. <laughs> and we have. We yeah. have. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyways, and we're not going to this time. We're actually going to, I'm going to let you close in a minute here. Okay. The point is, these are very important. The actual multimedia is very important for people to actually get to know who we are. So in closing, Carol's going to share with us what else she'd like to leave the audience with. Well, at the start of our interview, I had alluded to keeping a hangout on air and taking it down and versus, so versus leaving it up there. Now, again, that's a strategy, and I just wanted to, to make sure that I addressed it because I did say I was going to talk about it. Um, your hangout on air pulls a lot of Google juice, a lot of Google love. So if you can keep your Hangout on air, if it's part of your strategy, if you can keep the original Hangout on air, it's going to help you more than if you take it down, edit it, and put it back up. Because first, the, this right now, live, is a Hangout on air. 
As soon as we take it down and edit it and put it back up, it's just another video. And then, you know, you're starting over again. So you really need to decide what you want to do. For me, I did the same thing as you, or I do the same thing as you. I, I take the videos down, I add the intro and the outro and put it back up for my show and for the summit. And the original Hangout is unlisted and no one ever gets to see it. However, with my show, I'm going to start doing it live and leaving the original hang out to see what happens. So that, that means that I need to um, screw up less than I usually do, <laughs> or have done in the past, I should say. So in closing, the summit is a great way to build your confidence, get your name out there, be connected to the platform. And it is also um, something that I'm going to do again. So it just goes to show you, if it was a complete failure, I wouldn't have. So it wasn't a complete failure. So I'm going to do it again. So thank well, you. Well, I'm really excited about that you're going to do it again. And um, yeah, I mean, I think you did a really great job. And I'm really glad that you got to share with the audience what it takes to do one. Because I think a lot of people need to hear that. And I'm just really excited to have you again because it's always a joy to have a conversation with you. <laughs> and I love laughing with you and um, yeah I just it's wonderful to have you so I'm really excited about your new adventures I'm really excited to see what happens with your new adventures I know they'll be a wonderful success and for the audience I always put together a wonderful page which has the embedded podcast has embedded video has all of Carol's information so you'll be able to find her everywhere and since this is a podcast Carol you need to let people know where they can find you oh go to carolwayne.com so that's c-a-r-o-l wain.com is my website. On Facebook, I'm Carol Wayne. On Twitter, I'm Carol Wayne. On LinkedIn, I'm Carol Wayne in Canada. Um, and Google Plus, I'm Carol Wayne. Imagine that. So. <laughs> and you've been with your host, Carly Lissathorn, which you can find her at carlylissathorn.com. And that is uh, carlylissathorn.com. Just like Carol Wayne. We, we, we always have our things very simple for people, our name. <laughs> and you can Google either of us and find us everywhere. So for today, it is good afternoon, and we wish you much blessings everywhere. And thank you so much, Carol, for taking some time out of your busy schedule, and I know we'll be talking again. Yes. So that's it for today. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Carly. <laughs>